Hello and welcome to tutorial 86 in the series of tutorials and programs that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook or somewhere else, then please go to markplex.com, that's markplex.com, and sign up for our email list. What I'm going to be doing in today's tutorial is showing you how you could calculate the exponential moving average for a 30 minute price series applied to a five minute chart. And one of the difficulties here is that with a five minute chart, the program is run on every bar. To calculate the exponential moving average for a 30 minute bar, we need to cal calculate it at the end of the 30 minute bar. So anyway, there's a few uh, few issues we need to deal with. Let's jump straight in. I've actually already created a program, but I've created a blank program. And uh, I'm just gonna start from fresh so you can see what we're doing. I'm gonna double click on price series provider there that has added a price series provider. No, it hasn't. Let's do that again. Double click price series provider. That has added a price series provider to our component tray. I'm going to click on diction, rather properties. I'm going to set up some of the properties. So symbol we're going to use is we're just going to use symbol. In other words, we need it to use the same symbol as the underlying data. Uh, interval, we're going to use a 30 minute bar like so range we're going to leave for the moment uh, include volume info tick info we don't need that leave those as false it's going to change the name of this something a little easier to to do and uh, also I'm going to change the time zone to be exchange like so and now go now what we can do is look at the designer generated code and because I don't want to really have this in the component tray what I'm going to do is select this code just by dragging my mouse and I'm going to copy this into my program then I'm going to delete the component from the component tray if we don't do that we'll get an error so what I've done is the basic setup here and what I want to do is just make a couple of changes to the price here provider. I'm just going to run this once at the beginning of the program and I'm going to press shift tab just to move everything in one. Uh, basically everything's set up here apart from the range bars. At the moment it's saying it's only going to do one bar. What we want to do is actually load in data from the beginning of the chart. So I'm going to use this thing. Let's try that again. Press the dot operator going to use first date and I know to find that we're going to use date time dot from el date time date time and bear in mind this is run this thing once is run at the beginning of the chart so this is going to get the date and time for that first bar now we're going to get an error when we try and verify that that is because we're using date time but we've actually not set up the date space now the uh, namespace now to find out what namespace we need you could use the dictionary I've already done that before and you'll see I have just put in date time here in the search and it tells me that the namespace is EL system so if we go to the top of the screen we can just put in using EL system like so and if we would press F3 we should find that uh, we still have one error okay let's just ch double check our that should be date and time okay let's try it again f3 this time we're fine the other thing that we could also do is because we're using this namespace ts dot market data is we could actually create another using statement here and just say like so and then any place where we're using uh, the ts dot market data we could just actually delete that just make our program look a little simpler and uh, somewhat easier to understand okay so we've got another one here we could do that but I'm just going to verify this for the moment Okay, so far so good. Now what I want to do is actually find out when the 30 minute bars end. And we can do that down here by saying if PSP, which is the name of our price series provider, dot 
time. Now we need to find the time, like so. And we need to use square brackets. That means the the time for the current bar. I'm going to put that into EL time, like so. Easy language time. And I'm saying it's not the same as time last. And I'll explain what time last is in a moment. And because we're creating or using a variable, I need to declare time last up here. So let's just do that while we remember it. And it's going to be an intrabar persist variable. And we're calling it time last. It's basically storing, or it's going to be storing the time of the last, the time at the last tick, so we know when we've uh, when we've gone into a new bar. Then begin, and we want to do our calculation for the exponential moving average. I'm going to use um, the variable xav3. So I just need to declare that and. That is also going to need to be a intrabar persist variable. So I'm just going to copy that. Okay, and that looks like we misspelled that time last. So x have three. And we need to keep a record of what the moving average was the last time we calculated it. So we're going to create another variable called x have three last like so. Okay, so let's go down to our calculation and the calculation is x have 3 is equal to what it was the last time we calculated it, which we've said we're going to store in x have 3 last. Plus, now we're going to be creating a 14 period uh, exponential moving average. So I'm just going to hard code that in here. It would be very easy for you to make that an input as well. So I'm going to keep this somewhat simple. Times the value of the close. Now to get the closing value from the PSP it's closed, but then you also need to specify using the square brackets that it's for the most recent bar minus the calculation of what this was last time, or x have 3 last. So let's close brackets twice actually, and semicolon. Now one of the things we need to check, because we're using the PSP, we need to actually make sure that there are enough elements in the PSP or we could get an error. So what I'm going to say is if PSP.count is greater than 2, then we can do our calculation like so. Now the other thing we need to do now, having done that calculation, is just store into x have 3 last the value of x have 3 like so and uh, we also need to store the time last just so that we can work out every time we get a new 30 minute PSP bar and we do that by going PSP dot time see if we can find time like so and that is for the current bar and we need to make that in EL, EL time format like so. Okay and I think that is everything we need to do to do that calculation very basically and for historic bars. Let's just verify this. Okay so far so good. So what I want to do is just do some plots now and uh, I'm going to plot Plot three X have three and I'm going to verify that. Um, what I also want to do while we're here is just make sure that if we're plotting real time, I want to change the color of that plot. 
So we're going to do that using the if get app info and then the thing we particularly need and you can do this you just right click on uh, get app info to find out the different options but we want to know if this is a real time calc so if it's a real time calc this will return one and if it is then we're going to go then set plot color of plot three to yellow and uh, while we're about it let's just set the color of this one so we're going to name it and we'll make it cyan okay so let's just check everything's okay here what i'm going to do is go to the chart and i'm going to turn off the previous version and uh, we're going to have our new version so i'm going to turn off three I'm going to turn on four and we've also applied a moving average based on close of data two now you wouldn't need this but uh, I, I've done it just so that we can double check that this thing is calculating correctly and I'm using the moving average exponential I'll set the price close of data two again length of 14 okay so let's see what we get okay so you can see what is happening is we're getting our exponential plot and if we just mouse over that you'll see that the the figures do correspond but what I, what I want to do is just leave this running for uh, a few minutes and let's just see what happens with the real time plots okay so I've left this running for a few bars and you can see now that we're beginning to get a difference between the exponential moving average in real time using the price series provider and that that's calculated on data two and uh, if we were to zoom in a little closer you'd probably be able to see that uh, there is a difference between the two values okay so so what i'm going to do in the next video is just explain how we can do the real-time calculation correctly but just before we leave this part of the program uh, what i want to do is just show you something else that we just need to do to make this work a little bit better and that is if we go back you'll see that it actually takes some time for the calculated exponential moving average to converge with the exponential moving average calculated on data two so we need to do a couple of things one one is to make sure that the calculation starts on the same bar and i've already done that if we go to analysis techniques i've just adjusted the uh, maximum number of bars study will reference to 18 just by trial and error to make sure they start on the same bar the other thing we need to do is just add a little line of code to set the initial value of the exponential moving average the x av 3 last we do that with the following line if current bar equals one then we're setting it to be the value of close so i'm going to verify this and then if we go back to the program you'll see that right from the start we're getting the uh, the two lines converging a lot more quickly anyway so uh, as i say i'm going to do another video which just explains some of the things or at least one one way we could go about making sure that this program calculates the exponential moving average correctly for real-time data